Hello, I'm John Curtin, director of the G20 Research Group at the University of Toronto in Canada and part of the Global Governance Project uh, with GT Media in London uh, and around. We've come to the end uh, of the first working day of day one of the Buenos Aires Summit on uh, November uh, 30th and the leaders are still struggling to produce a summit of even solid success. Uh, for weeks before the summit, uh, they produced three possible draft communiques, but none were accepted, uh, largely due to um, the American um, view. Uh, their Sherpas, personal representatives, got to work here in Buenos Aires for three days before the summit, stayed up all night uh, on November 29th uh, and 30th, but to no avail, still no summit uh, that the uh, leaders would be uh, likely to authorize and release at the end uh, of the event. And uh, by the uh, end of the uh, first day, it was still um, up in the air whether there would be any consensus communique at all. Uh, so much of the attention focused on the uh, bilateral visits, uh, particularly uh, with uh, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin uh, Salman being the first um, to arrive under a cloud uh, due to the recent murder uh, of a journalist uh, in the Saudi Arabian Consulate General um, in Turkey. Uh, but he uh, got off to a good start meeting with um, Indian President uh, Narendra Modi, uh, highlighting all the areas in which Saudi Arabia could and uh, would uh, invest. Uh, then the Crown Prince met with uh, Vladimir Putin of Russia, highlighted by a very enthusiastic um, high fives uh, between the um, two men. Uh, Donald Trump was um, more um, subdued. Uh, he did um, meet with the uh, Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, uh, the uh, outgoing President of uh, Mexico, uh, President Nieto, to sign uh, the new NAFTA, our uh, trade liberalization deal, what the Canadians call the Canada-US-Mexican uh, agreement. Uh, but it, in fact, could be uh, the only uh, move towards trade liberalization uh, that would appear right here at the Buenos Aires summit um, itself. Uh, President Trump did not meet uh, with uh, President Putin of Russia. Uh, his way of saying uh, he didn't approve or didn't want to uh, support uh, Putin's uh, seizure uh, of Ukrainian uh, naval vessels off Crimea uh, the other day. At the same time, uh, including uh, the United States, issued a, a condemnation uh, of it uh, in a collective um, statement, uh, a pretty firm um, response. Summit itself uh, was afflicted by the fact that Angela Merkel uh, didn't make it uh, today uh, because of a mechanical error uh, with her uh, plane. And she's the veteran of the G20 uh, summit tree, a uh, host of the last one in Hamburg. So her wisdom, experience, and skill uh, were not here uh, to try and bring uh, the leaders uh, together. So after their leaders alone uh, retreat in the morning, uh, their first uh, working session at lunch, uh, their second uh, in the afternoon. By the end of the first day, um, the signs uh, were not um, good. Uh, the briefings uh, of all of the countries were suddenly cancelled, uh, suggesting uh, that any consensus was actually dissolving uh, rather than um, affirming uh, up. Uh, the only uh, real um, deliverable uh, was an apparent agreement uh, from the leaders that they would endorse the report of a working group um, from the end of uh, October uh, that would uh, or could lead to more investment in educating uh, young cultural advances of the G7 summit hosted by Canada in Charlevoix, uh, Quebec, uh, back in uh, June. Uh, but even then, uh, there was no new money uh, attached to um, this uh, initiative to build on the um, $4 billion that had been unleashed uh, at Charlevoix by the G7 uh, in June. So uh, as the leaders went off to their uh, evening's entertainment, uh, still real doubt about what the Buenos Aires summit uh, would produce, including on the uh, divisive issues of trade, uh, climate change, 
uh, human rights in Saudi Arabia uh, and Russia's military behavior uh, in Ukraine uh, and its borders uh, elsewhere.